Hey, what's up guys? Bajira here. This video I'm going to be giving you some uh, 3v3 arena tips uh, as WLS versus RLS. RLS is easily one of the strongest comps in the game at the moment. With the combined pressure of the Warlock and ridiculous bursts of the Rogue, plus tons of control from both of those classes. Seemingly endless defensive capabilities. This comp is a pain, especially as a warrior. But, while playing with Poon and Hotted, we had some amazing games against some very good RLS teams. So I figured, why not make a commentary video, letting you guys know some of the things that we did to be effective. So when the gates open, and you see it lock, Shaman, and then they had the little rogue buff, you should be thinking about making sure that your team doesn't get sapped, and make sure that you don't get sapped. One of the ways you can do this is save your battle shout until once the gates open, pop that battle shout, give your Shaman a quick intervene, and maybe you can catch the sap. You still are susceptible to being re-sapped if they did want to sap him, they'll just sap him again, but it still lets you govern the pace of the game a little bit, and lets you know if the rogue's nearby you. So if the RLS sits back like this, what I like to do is just charge in and get in combat. If you were not able to find the rogue in the opener, start on that warlock. Try to keep as many UAs off of your team as possible with pummel and throw down if you get faked. Unfortunately, I got soul swapped too, so nothing really I can do about that. The rogue does open up on my team, and as soon as he comes out, I'm going to charge to him and throw him down. He trinketed though, and he also vanished. So out of that vanish, he cheap shots me into a kidney shot. So I'm taking a little bit of damage, but we're still okay. I'm going to charge back on this Warlock and try to reestablish the pressure we started. Unfortunately, the Warlock can just port away from me, which can be really frustrating. So your job as a warrior at this point is to pay attention to your health. Since I'm about 50% health, I am going to intervene back to my healer, get a little bit of space from that rogue, and give my Shaman a chance to top me off. At this point, they've already messed up their DR, so I'm just going to Bladestorm out of this uh, Smoke Bomb and not take really any damage at all. So with one Smoke Bomb down, and without me having to use my Trinket, we're in really good shape here. In order to beat an RLS, they have to make a lot of mistakes, and you have to play perfectly. And I think that is one of the mistakes that we get to capitalize on now. We still have defensive cooldowns for anything they can do to us. So, after they dropped the Smoke Bomb and I got out of it, we rooted the Rogue, did a ton of damage to him, out of that root, we coiled him, and we were able to make him pop his Cloak of Shadows to try to get away. So, they had a little bit of a blunder by dropping a poor Smoke Bomb when I was on DR for stun. I was able to get out of it, and we turned around and did a ton of damage to that rogue and made him use defensive cooldowns. So, his Cloak of Shadows is over. He starts to go to my lock. I leap to him and throw him down. Since he has no Cloak of Shadows, we're comfortable sitting on this uh, rogue, especially with the amount of control my Shaman and Warlock are putting on the other team's Warlock, trying to limit as much dot pressure as possible. Because if you do let a lock free cast, as we'll see later in the video, things can get scary. But since the rogue has popped a lot of cooldowns, we feel comfortable sitting on the rogue. He Shadow Step Kidneys me, it, but they don't really do anything off of that. It's more of like a peel. So I see the Warlock all, really far into our territory, so I'm going to try to hit the Warlock. He's going to immediately port away, which leads me to just hit the Rogue again. As a warrior, you do want to try to do consistent damage, and that means hitting whatever's close to you. It can be frustrating to have the, the target you want to hit constantly run away from you, but hopefully there will be something close to you to hit, and that's probably the best thing you can do. So we've got full dots on the Rogue, and I want to switch to the Lock. I see the Shaman casting at Hex, in my focus frame there, I pop my spell reflect about 0.2 seconds before the cast goes off, and I'm able to get a full hex reflect on him. This puts us in amazing position to try to score a kill on this warlock. He's way pushed up in our territory, pretty much oom, can't really do much to get away from us, he's out of port range, got a tentacle on him, his shaman's being controlled so much we're able to score a kill. So what happens here is Poon gets him in a full fear out of that hex. Shaman drops a Tremor Totem, Poon kills the Tremor Totem, gets him in a half howl, which he trinkets. Out of that half howl, I focus charge and double DR fear the Shaman, which is really DR feared, but it's just enough to score the kill on that lock before the Shaman can drop the Spirit Link Totem. That's some pretty sick play. WLS does require an amazing Warlock, and Poon is definitely that. Alright, so in this next game, we're fighting the exact same team, just different map. We had an awesome series with these guys, and I was really glad that we were able to queue against them and uh, get some practice and learn from each other. So in this match, I'm going to charge on the Warlock, root him all the way on the other side of the map. Luckily, we get a tentacle to spawn, so I'm going to pop some cooldowns and try to do big damage to this Warlock. As you can tell, though, in order for me to hit the Warlock, I have to be really, really far away from my team. So I'm going to focus charge the Shaman, focus spear him, try to get a little bit of CC, and try to put myself in a little bit better position. I get Shadow Stepped and Cheap Shotted as a peel, but I see the Rogue going and switching to my Shaman, so I'm going to try to leap all the way across the map, throw the rogue down, we overlap uh, our throwdown and the coil, but we really want to get this rogue off of our shaman because he's taking a ton of damage from the combined pressure of the lock dots and the rogue burst. So the rogue is in kind of a rough position, I'm going to pop recklessness here and try to score a kill or just get at least a ton of damage and maybe even some cooldowns out of this team. So we do get a cloak of shadows, so once again I'm going to root the rogue and try to keep damage up on him. I do get kidney shotted 
and feared at the same time, but they don't drop a smoke bomb just yet. So I have Earth Shield. I'm okay. I don't really need to pop very many cooldowns. So I think. At the same time, like, our entire team is about half health. So I'm talking to my Shaman. He says I don't need to regen, but maybe I should have. Maybe I should have topped myself off so we didn't have to worry about me so much. But regardless, I'm going to try to hit the log, try to establish some pressure. But the Rogue is just controlling the entire team, tearing us up. This is why RLS is so scary. So right here, my Shaman is below half health. The Rogue is on me, dealing damage to me, trying to switch some pressure around. I still have Earth Shield, which makes my Shaman a really good switch target. I'm over here trying to mess with the Shaman. Trying to control the Warlock, do damage to the Warlock, while the Rogue is over there globaling my Shaman. So this is one of the really scary things about RLS, is that they can kill anyone at any time, if you're not careful. That's why it's really important to try to disrupt any sort of opener, any sort of burst opportunity that they can get on your team, because once they start building pressure, it is really hard to recover. So when you see the Rogue open on your team, it's a great idea to intervene back or charge that Rogue, and try to peel them off your team if you start Shadow Dancing. Make sure you get a Disarm on that Rogue. Because if you allow an RLS to build pressure on your team, it's not going to be pretty. And one of the ways that RLS does build that pressure is by using their rogue to control your team's damage and your team's healing output. Which a rogue can do both. They have plenty of CC to shut down a healer and a DPS at the same time. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run in there and try to draw a lot of fire while dealing damage of my own. They're going to kidney me and drop a smoke bomb, which I trinket and leap out of. So, there's a lot of damage that they could have put out and we survived it just fine. So I'm going to get on this Warlock, try to limit the casting that the Warlock's going to do while trying to deal damage to him. So I get him in a full throwdown and I'm able to get him pretty low health. Because of this pressure, he's going to pour it away and I'm just going to immediately switch to the Rogue. I do not want to go behind those boxes versus an RLS. That's just asking it to get switched to and killed before your healer can do anything about it. So I'm going to disarm this Rogue because my lock is at about 50% health and I do not want them to start making switches and leaving all of us at around 50% health. So by disarming the rogue, I'm limiting damage and making the rogue think twice about being pushed that far up into our side of the map. So he's going to retreat back, and I'm going to switch back to the warlock. Try to get some kicks on his UA casts and limit the damage he's putting out. Once again, I see the shaman casting hex on me. Watching my focus frame, I'm able to reflect it just in time and get him in a full hex. He is going to trinket this one, though. So by playing heads up and being aware of what's going on around you, you're able to get trinkets out of their team that they wouldn't have otherwise burned. So by having their healer's trinket already down for two minutes, this is a chance for us to capitalize and deal some good damage to their team while CCing their healer. The rogue is very far pushed up. I'm going to intervene away from the rogue, try to change my position a little bit, make sure that my healer doesn't eat any sort of kidney shots or blinds. After the intervene, I'm going to charge the rogue and throw him down while I still have the ability to stun him. Remember, when somebody is stunned, they cannot dodge, parry, any of that. So it's an excellent time to use like, a crucial ability like a hamstring or a throwdown on a rogue while they're stunned so they can't dodge it. Luckily we get about three tentacles on that rogue, which makes him have to vanish, and we're able to global the warlock pet, making the warlock grab a new pet. So, random tentacles, always nice. Help the match out. We're not really able to get any sort of huge kills out of that, but we are able to get a few cooldowns, which are excellent, because it, RLS has lots of cooldowns to burn through before they, you know, are susceptible to being killed. So, any sort of extra pressure like that, any sort of cooldown usage that we can make them use, it's great. So I see my Shaman getting switched to. My, my Warlock wants to hit their Warlock, but I remember from last time, I'm not going to leave this Rogue alone on my Shaman. So I run over there to him, make sure he's not going to do anything to my Shaman. They get fooled out to my Shaman, and they go over to him again. I'm going to do the same thing. I am not letting them hit my Shaman. So the Rogue goes behind the boxes, perhaps inadvisable. He's really far pushed in, so I'm going to root him here. We get a full soul swap to him, a tentacle procs. I'm going to pop retaliation into this guy, and they didn't know what hit him. Rogue gets global. That was so beautiful. I don't think that... <laughs> I don't know that the switch is intended to kill the rogue like that right here. But it is intended to peel for my shaman. He's about 50% health. Do not want him to die to this rogue. But we get some tentacles. I'm going to pop some cooldowns like retaliation, deadly calm, and trinket. That combined with a huge soul swap from Poon is able to do enough damage to global that rogue before they knew what happened to him. So, switching to rogues is great. Switching to them when they're popping cooldowns and disarming them or peeling them is awesome. Definitely something that you want to do. And switching to rogues when you have cooldowns like Throwdown, Root, and Coil. When you can line those things up and deal a lot of damage to rogues and get a really nice clean swap and perhaps even a global on a rogue like that, that's excellent. However, there are risks to training a rogue. It can be done, and, we've, and we trained rogue a lot when we were fighting RLS comps. However, by training the rogue, you let the warlock just do absolutely whatever he wants which can also be scary. 
because that's the thing with RLS is that both of these teams, rogues have ton of control, ton of burst. Locks have a ton of control and ridiculous spread damage. Consistent, heavy pressure. And if you let a warlock just go nuts on your team, it's going to be kind of scary, just like letting a rogue go nuts. So you have to kind of split your pressure, peel the rogue, make switches to the rogue, but if you train him, the warlock is going to just go insane. So in this game, we see the warlock just spreading pressure all over our team. This rogue is in deep, but he doesn't even care because he's able to control the team enough to prevent our pressure from going out and just let their team do insane amounts of damage. So I'm able to get a little bit of pressure on this Warlock, but everybody on our team is pretty much at 30 to 40% if or lower. So I'm over here like, man, what is going on? Well, what's going on is RLS. This is what, a, this is what <laughs> RLS looks like when it's like 2400 rated. It is scary business. So I'm doing my best to try to protect my team a little bit, prevent swaps, but this is what happens, is you just get shivved and you're stuck in the middle of the map without a charge, and what do you do then? You know, you waddle around and you're like, well, shit. You know, you get feared, out of that fear you get hexed, and by that team, your team's dropping spirit links and dying, and it's just like, okay, that was ugly. So, these tips that I'm giving you, they're helpful, but there is so much that a good RLS can do to you, it's ridiculous. So th that team was 2400, that rogue actually got his 2400 achievement off of us, so I'm like, okay, well go Mr. Rogue, this is the season to do it, but I'm just showing you some, some nice tactics, some nice wins, so you can get a feel for things that are effective, and then you can also see the downside of st some of those strategies sometimes. So RLS is a team of players, these players play differently, so you're going to have to adapt and see what these teams play like in order to find out what's effective. So in this match, again, we're starting super hard on the Warlock, getting tons of pressure on him. Out of that pressure, they're able to stop all of it by dropping a Kidney Smoke Bomb. So, they're back to pretty much full health, but we've gotten some cooldowns out of them, and we've made them, you know, let them know that we're definitely going to be aggressing on them this match. So, the Shaman's in kind of a weird position, so we're like, hey, switch to the Shaman. We get him really low health. This allows Poon to spread dots on their whole team while we're pressuring their team immensely. So we're able to get the Shaman about 20%. I'm going to Blaze Storm with the Wreck Up to try to spread some damage in what I'm assuming will be a Spirit Link. So they do Spirit Link, but I, I get disarmed as well. So out of that Spirit Link, I'm going to switch to this Rogue. This is what we like to see. Their whole team at about 30% health. We can switch to anything. My Tentacle decides that it's going to hit the Shaman, so you must obey the Tentacle and hit the Shaman as well. I'm kind of in a weird position. The Shaman comes over to my side, which is great. I get blinded, haunted, links the blind, and breaks it just in time for me to hit, charge that shaman heal. Now, the shaman is trying to fake me here, but I'm not buying it. I wait to kick to the very last second. I'm able to get a full lockout on him and score the kill. So, we've killed rogues, we've killed warlocks, and now I'm showing some times when we're killing shamans. As WLS, you have lots of options. You just have to be attentive. Find out the team's positioning, see when they're making mistakes, and capitalize off of those mistakes. One of the reasons I love this comp so much as a warrior is because you can pretty much hit anything. Um, it is a very viable strategy to switch to a target every time you have a charge up. Hit something until your charge comes off cooldown, charge something else, hit that until your charge is back off cooldown, do the same thing and repeat. Um, the only problem with that, especially this season, is that rogues can deal so much damage to you that they force you to go defensive. So I'm wearing a lot of resilience right now. Even with the Girthalak, I have 5.1k resilience. So. That allows me to stay in the fight longer, and even though I don't have as much strength, I am dealing damage more because I don't have to play so defensively. So I figure that being able to stay in the fight, hit something consistently is going to do more damage over time than a couple hundred strength is going to do me if I can't even hit anything at all. So we're going to join this game a little bit late. I'm going to blade storm this rogue's kidney. We're going to drop a spirit link because both of our shamans are pretty oom. So both the teams are running dry, and it's up to us to make sure that you know we don't die and that we can score a kill before they do. So, with the Shaman Oom, both the Lock and the Rogue at pretty low health, we're going to switch to the Shaman here. I'm going to charge him, throw him down so he can't tremor this Howl that Poon gets on both the DPS. Out of that throwdown, we're going to coil the Shaman, which he trinkets, but it's pretty much too late for him now. He's not going to be able to get any sort of cast off. He's got a full row of dots, and I've popped a wreck, so even my bleeds are critting. So, that's one of the things that you can do against Thunder LS as well. If you can get the Shaman in a throwdown while howling the the two DPS, you're going to be able to do a lot of damage to the Shaman without his DPS being able to peel for him. So, really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it's coming in at the end of the season, but hey, I had a ton of games versus RLS, and I figured maybe a commentary would be more interesting 
and informative than a bunch of games versus RLS just with Skype or something. So, anyway, really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Next season, I probably should be doing more sort of commentary style videos. I do enjoy making these. Sometimes they just take a little bit longer. And uh, as we all know, time is money, friend. But I am going to try to do more of these. I really hope you enjoyed it. And uh, good luck against RLS now and in the future, guys. Thanks for watching. Peace.